As we're just days away from the New York Giants season being kicked off, I thought it would be a good opportunity to talk about the five biggest storylines this year for the New York football Giants. I'm pumped up, man. I am ready for New York Giants football. If you are ready for New York Giants football, hit that thumbs up icon. Because I'm ready. You're watching Giants Now by Chat Sports. I am your host, Marshall Green. Let's get it on. Five biggest storylines for Big Blue this season. And the reason I did today's show is because it's not just for this season, these things that are important, but I also think this, this will have a trickle effect into the future years for the New York Giants. And the first thing that I will be paying attention to, Daniel Jones style, is an improved Offensive line. For the first time in a while as a Giants fan, I am going into the season with an expectation that the Giants offensive line, dare I say, is going to be middle of the pack. And middle of the pack for the New York Giants, that would feel like winning the lottery. Because after they gave up 85 sacks last year, I mean, sheesh. This was the Giants' 2023 offensive line in week one. Andrew Thomas, Nate Torres hamstring on the first drive of the play, uh, first drive of the game. Ben Bredesen, rookie John Michael Schmitz, Mark Lewinsky, who was benched three or four weeks into the season, and then Evan Neal. This was your offensive line against the Dallas Cowboys week one when you lost 40 to nothing. Then you went out and made some big time moves, some big time additions. You added people that have actually produced at a really high level in this league. John Runyon was a part of the Green Bay Packers who had a really good offensive line last year. The right side of the Raiders' offensive line, Greg Van Roten and Jermaine Illuminor, who the Raiders were ranked as a top-10 offensive line last year, come and now hold down the right side of your offensive line. So your entire offensive line looks like this. Andrew Thomas, John Runyon, John Michael Schmitz, Greg Van Roten, and Jermaine Illuminor. A little bit worried about the tackle depth. Yeah, you got Evan Neal. I don't love Joshua Zudu there. You got the UDFA, Jake Koopas. Shout out to him for making the team. Austin Schottman just went to IR. His season could be done. So maybe you move up somebody like Jimmy Morrissey from the practice squad. And you got Aaron Stinney, who started for the Tampa Bay Bucks multiple times last year and produced pretty well. Is this finally the year the Giants offensive line is not the worst in the NFL? Not the second worst. Not the third worst but maybe in the middle of the pack. I would do nasty things to have the 16th best offensive line. I would commit felonies to have the 16th best offensive line. And I think we might get there. Maybe should start the show with this, but you know what? I don't always want every show to be about him because it's a football team of 53 players. But Daniel Jones is the biggest storyline for the New York Giants this year. He absolutely is. It is year six. It is now... Or it is quite figuratively never for Daniel Jones. This is his last chance. He knows that. He knows that if he does not at least have the Giants playing for a playoff spot in week 18, he is going to be cut. He knows that. He's a smart man. He sees the financials of if he's cut. He knows that the Giants will save $19.3 million next season. If he is cut, he also knows he has a cap hit of $41.6 million for next year. If the Giants are going to keep Daniel Jones on the roster heading into 2025, they need to see major improvement. I don't even think the season he put together in 2022 is good enough for him to keep his job going into 2025. He needs to have the best season of his NFL career by a good bit. And look, if you watch this show, you know how I feel. And I'm never going to hide it because I'm real. And that's what I want to do. I want to keep you guys informed, entertained, and tell you what you need to hear, maybe not what you want to hear. Even though I don't think Daniel Jones is a Super Bowl winning quarterback, which in my opinion, if you don't have a Super Bowl winning quarterback level of talent on your team, you should always be looking to find that guy. I don't think he's that guy. 
But I am going to be rooting my tail off every Sunday, every Monday, and every Thursday for Daniel Jones to win football games. Because the best and the fastest way for the Giants to get back on track is if number eight could play like a franchise quarterback. So I will be rooting my heart out with my emotions on my sleeve every single week for Daniel Jones to play well. I want him to prove me wrong. I want to come up here at the end of the year and say, I was wrong. I don't know ball. Please, Daniel Jones, prove me wrong. Biggest storyline of the year. Absolutely is Daniel Jones. Something else. Five, zero, and 97. Five, zero, and 97. How much of an impact, how much, how big of game changers will these three be? If the Giants are going to be the football team that I want them to be, that you want them to be, a team that's playing meaningful football games into December, competing for a playoff spot in week 16, 17, and 18, not tanking for a draft pick, but maybe competing for a wild card spot, it will be because Dexter Lawrence, Brian Burns, and Kayvon Thibodeau are the best three-headed monster pass rush in the NFL. It is that simple. First round pick and $90 million on Dexter Lawrence. Traded the second round pick and $150 million on Brian Burns. First round pick on Kayvon Thibodeau. You need these boys to be special. You need them to carry this team. The Giants will be as good as those three are this year. If those three are elite, if those three wreck games, the Giants will stack dubs. If those three are just average, above average, can complete, can compete a little bit, you're probably not going to be that good. Your defense can be one of the best in the NFL if those three are playing up to their potential that we all believe them can be. Your team this year will be as good as those three players. And then this guy, number one in the program and the heart right now, Malik Neighbors. Maybe the only person on this team right now that's injecting life, love, and passion back into this organization, back into this fan base. Can the 21-year-old rookie, the LSU Tiger, the Bayou Bengal, how much can he elevate this offense? Which is probably an unfair question to ask, right? I'm asking how much can the second receiver taking an NFL draft upgrade this offense? How much better can he make this football team? But that's what it is. He's the second best player on this offense behind Andrew Thomas. And I know it's probably unfair to say that about a rookie, but I truly believe it. And I think he's proven that over the summer and into the preseason. So, yeah, they need to go out and do it. Those three guys, they need, or neighbors, he needs to carry. And I'm happy, and I'm pumped up about this wide receiver depth chart. Darius Slayton, Jalen Hyatt, Wondell Robinson, you got four guys that can all compete. So, yeah, Malik Neighbors, he needs to be special. And he needs to be in contention for winning Rookie of the Year. You want to show some love to the rookie? Get his jersey today. Chatsports.com slash neighbors. That is chatsports.com slash neighbors. Get your jersey today so it'll be ready for week one. Chatsports.com slash neighbors. Chatsports.com slash neighbors. Last thing everyone should be paying attention to, CB2. Who's it going to be? As we're filming this video, the New York Giants just signed to Dory Jackson. The Giants just signed to Dory Jackson. So can he be that football player? Can he be the guy that steps up as a CB2? Just don't even go to this. You can just go to his bio real quick. Can Adoree Jackson be the guy after you just signed him and step up and be that player? They just signed Adoree Jackson. Can he be that guy? You're going to need him to. There's a reason you're going out and signing him right now. And it's because Joe Shane lied to everybody and said we feel good about our corners. No, you don't. That's why you went out and just signed a veteran Adoree Jackson. I'm happy they did it. Wasn't a great player for the New York Giants last year. But, yeah, I'm excited that Ori Jackson's back. Can he stay healthy? Can he be better than he was in 2023? Because he wasn't all that good. He can be, as Bill says in the chat. Will he be? I don't know. The Giants are going to need him to. Because if not, you're in trouble. Because I don't know if Andrew Phillips is that guy. I don't know if other rookies on this team 
are that guy. Like, he's got to step up. Got to step up. 28 years old. You're not washed. Go be great. Because Deontay Banks with Dory Jackson, with Bobby O'Karake, Brian Burns, Dexter Lawrence, Kayvon Thibodeau, Tyler Newbin takes a step. You could have one of the better defenses in the National Football League. But if you can't cover, you can't win. It's 2024. It's almost 2025. You got to be able to cover on the back half of your defense. What's your confidence level in the Giants cornerbacks? Scale it 1 to 10. Let me know in the comments. 10, you're the most confident. 1, you're not confident. I will say the addition of Jackson bumps me up to about a 6.5. That's much better than what it was. I'm just ready, man. I'm ready for week one. I'm getting pumped up. I'm ready to watch some New York Giants football, baby. I'm ready to go 1-0. I'm ready to beat Patrick Seatman and the Minnesota Vikings. I am pumped up. Come on. We're almost here, baby. We're almost here. If you haven't yet, give me a follow on social media. I'm on Twitter, at MarshallGreen underscore. I'm on Instagram, at MarshallGreen underscore. Give me a follow, and let's go Big Boop.